Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Not the star of Red. The books being read are available uh, there at the small table by the by the door. Twenty-six-year-old Chrissy Lopez's life is in dire need of a makeover. Her wardrobe revolves around ratty shirts and beat-up sneaks. Her grueling schedule as a TV executive leaves no room for a social life. And worst of all, she's, she's still hung up on the evil ex who left her five years ago. When her fashionable grand aunt passes away and leaves behind a room full of vintage stuff, the shy stylista inside Chrissy gradually resurfaces. Soon, she feels like she's making progress with a budding love life to boot. But the grim ghost of her past catches up with her, threatening to push her back into depression. To finally move on, Chrissy learns that walking away is not enough. This time, she needs to take a leap of faith. Hi guys, my name is Gray. Hi, I'm Miguel Mendes. Vintage Love by Agai Lanera. I couldn't believe I fell for the cool UK pun. Of course, I couldn't possibly be heading to Europe. It said, they brought me to the promised land of second-hand clothing. The huge ukai ukai. UK UK, get it? <laughs> the huge new ukai ukai of complex in Kubao. I know what you're thinking. I felt Bea's eyes on me as I took in the rows and rows of clothing hung and squished together like accordion pleats. I totally understand and feel squeamish about wearing used clothes, but honestly, I've gotten some really great bargains here. Even genuine designer stuff. And that musty smell? Nothing that warm water and soap can cure. I turned to her, feigning disgust, then burst out laughing. <laughs> Are you kidding? It's perfect! I immediately attacked the rack with a sign that said, 50 pesos, buy one, take one. Like a mother hen, Bea followed me, giving me shopping tips. Buy stuff you can mix and match, I know, I know. Plain tops in different colors, a nice skirt maybe, and yeah, a dress that's good for both casual and formal. Got it. Whoa, that's my girl. You got your fashion mojo back. She held up a palm and I slapped it. For the next hour or so, we doggedly plowed through the racks or Hawkeyes on the lookout for damages, stains, and other wardrobe malfunctions. Of course, the clothes shouldn't look too secondhand. Frayed edges, unless they were part of the design, were a no-no. The fitting room wasn't exactly comfortable. It was the size of an upright coffin, and I kept banging my elbows on the walls. The only thing that shielded us from the public was a flimsy curtain. Bay and I took turns standing guard outside as we tried on a short-listed wardrobe. Finally, we arrived at the cashier, exhausted but happy. How's the 500 peso challenge? They asked. 480 bucks, I said proudly. 20 pesos left for merienda, my treat. While sipping buco juice at the nearby Carindiria, we brought out our purchases. Nice! They looked admiringly at my favorite find, a knitted oversized top in lemon yellow and lime green. It will look great with Mama's gold bangles, don't you think? I had clued in Bea earlier about my plan to use Mama Marine's accessories. Perfect, she concurred. That reminds me, we still have some stuff left over from the rummage sale. Remember the vintage shops we passed earlier? Maybe we can ask them to buy their, her things. Sure. I thought the rest of my juice. By the way, Bay, I've been meaning to ask you. Remember when we were in Mama's apartment and Mom asked you about your marriage plans? To my surprise, Bea avoided my eyes. I laughed. <laughs> What's up with you? Everyone knows that you and Mark will eventually get married. Wait, you guys are practically married. Why are you blushing? Nothing. They emerge. It's just that I'm afraid of jinxing it. You know, if, if you talk about something, it might not even come true. Hello? I shook her shoulders. It's been seven freaking years. If I cracked a mirror on the day you got together, the bad luck street would have blown itself out by now. It's been that long. <laughs> That's the point, they blurted out. People expect us to get married, but the thing is, he hasn't brought up 
the subject recently. Well, why don't you bring it up? But what if... She sighed. What if he doesn't have plans with me? What if he gets pressures and, and decides to break up with me? She looked away. I don't know what I'd do without Mark. Oh, Bea. I was about to launch into a pep talk to convince her that good old Mar wouldn't flake out on her. But I stopped short, thinking of Mia's ex-fiance, with whom she had spent 10 years of her life, only to have him cheat on, on her and jilt her a month before their wedding. The street where the vintage shops were located was a short distance away. So Bay and I decided to walk it out with our shopping bags instead of leaving them in her car parked two blocks away. The first store was we visited looked like a crown storage room with no semblance of order whatsoever. Old soda and milk bottles gathered dust in crates while vinyl records were heaped high like wall towers. Even with Bay's winning smile and marketing skills, we couldn't get a word edgewise because as soon as the owner, a cranky woman, found out that we weren't there to buy but to sell, she shooed us away. The second vintage shop had more or less the same ambience, but the shopkeeper was a dear old thing, a reed thin grandpa whose eyes twinkled when he smiled. Still, it was a no-go. We, we can't afford to buy your things since we can hardly sell ours, he gently explained. Well, third time's a charm, I said, motioning to the vintage shop across the street. Like the others, this store looked polished and inviting. The words nostalgia, mania painted on its glass walls in swirly psychedelic letters. I caught a glimpse of the shopkeeper hunched over a MacBook as I put my palm on the glass door. Bea suddenly hissed in my ear. Chrissy, it's him. Him who? I looked around and seeing no one, pushed the door to the sound of chimes. Why do you look so pale? Hi, good afternoon. The shopkeeper called out. Welcome to Nostalgia Mania. Good afternoon, I replied cheerfully. We just want to inquire about... <laughs> I took one good look at him, and the blood drained from my face. Standing before me was none other than the surfer boy. Yes? He tilted his head, still smiling. He looked at me, then at Bea. Slowly, his forehead creased as his eyes returned to me. Wait a minute. Have we met? For some reason, I couldn't seem to increase a stupid grin stuck in my face. I was filled with the crazy urge to walk backwards slowly to the door, but at that moment, my legs felt they had been cemented to the floor. Bea swooped in and extended her hand. Hello, I'm Bea, and this is Chrissy. We haven't been formally introduced, but yes, we've met. You were at our rubbish sale just last week. Surfer boy stared at her, then at me. Right, the girl who didn't want to turn me on. <sighs> this time, <laughs> the blood rushed to my face. Yup, the one you accused of selling face. He had the decency to blush. Sorry, I was out of line that day. I didn't know what to say. I wasn't prepared for an apology. Finally, Bea broke an awkward silence. It was probably the heat. It can make you do crazy things. He gave a little laugh. Yeah, probably. More silence. He cleared his throat. Uh, I feel that I owe you guys an explanation. Whenever Dad and I go shopping, he tends to show his excitement, so vendors would end up charging him more. I have to act like the uninterested customer so I can get the better price. He ended sheepishly. I guess I went overboard last time. Then he turned to me, offering his hand with a smile. Friends? And this, by the way. I caught my breath. The <laughs> smile transformed his features, making them look cuter than ever. Thank goodness my palms weren't sweaty. I'm sorry too, I managed to say. But you were right. I totally lack customer skills. I'm not used to selling stuff. Why? What do you guys do? He asked, clear, clearly relieved at the chance to change the subject. They rattled on about her businesses, then pointed to me. Chrissy here works in TV. Really? What show? As I what? I stammered out an answer. Executive producer for this show called Profiles. Oh yeah, I've watched that. He said. Well, that really nice feature on Jeff Javier. You know that indie film he just started in? My friend wrote and directed that. I love that film! I bothered, then immediately clammed up, wondering if overextending the word love made me sound like an airhead. <laughs> Awkwardly, I jerked 
down my head and pretended to be interested in his blue and white check bands. He didn't seem to notice. And what brings you guys here? I'm sure you already have more than your share of vintage items. Well, they said, we were just looking around after a shopping spree. She held up her plastic bag with the words UK UK on it. Vince grinned. Oh yes, that's where I got this. He said, tugging at his yellow shirt printed with the Beatles Sgt. Pepper autumn cover. Cool shirt! They looked at me, hoping I would continue. I remained silent and felt her mentally roll her eyes at me. Anyway, we thought of exploring the possibility of selling the leftover stuff from our rubbish sale to the vintage shops here, but they were totally sold on the idea. Vince dropped the stubble that covered the clutch chin, I remembered oh so well. People usually set up vintage shops just because they love old things. They don't really intend to earn a lot from it, like my dad and I. We don't really buy stuff outright unless we're really interested in it, like say... He turned to me, an impish look on his face. A maroon vintage radio that's still in mint condition. I felt my face grow hot. Look, I'm really sorry about Vince frantically waved his hands as if warding off an evil spirit. No, 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 please, please. I, I was just trying to lighten things up. It makes you feel better. Dad was really pissed that I wasn't able to close that meal, so he really wanted that radio. As he gazed at me, I felt my skin grow warm. Then he straightened up. Hey, um, we may not be able to buy your stuff, but we're open to consignment. Just give us a fair price so we can still make a profit, and whatever we sell, We'll turn them out over to you. Really? That's great! They are enthused. We can bring over the stuff next week along with the price list. Cool. Vince said. Perfect! I chimed in, finally managing to smile at Vince. Vince was intently looking at my face. You know, I didn't recognize you right away because you look different last time. To my horror, his eyes roved from my eyes to my cheeks. Finally, settling on my nose where an almost invisible bit of pimple residue was drying up. <laughs> he held my breath as he finally snapped his fingers. I got it. He grinned. You're actually smiling. They were still going to make a big deal of it later. I just knew it. But I just couldn't help it. I blushed. 